disappointing don't quite cover that. Um, I don't really know where to start. First half, I thought we played all right. Got the, got the ball down well, some good intricate passing, uh, some good through ball, good runs on the ball, good take-ons, uh, and, and we played okay. Um, Critson, really, the first half, we just didn't shoot. Too many players trying to make one too many passes and just not getting the shot off. Uh, and you thought, really, if we take a chance and take a shot, we probably would have scored and, and gone in. We probably deserved to go in at least one up at half-time, but if you don't take your chances, you, you can't really complain. So, nil-nil at half-time. No idea what Gary O'Neill said to them, but whatever it was, it was completely the wrong thing and did not work at all. It looked like Sheffield United just pushed 10 yards further up the pitch and we just didn't cope with it at all. You know, a lot of the first half, it was across the back four, or yeah, back four as it, as it was then, sideways and backwards. Um, the usual, which we come to expect with, with modern football, and I don't complain about it, it's just how it is. But um, second half, yeah, they, they pushed up a bit and we just couldn't cope really. I don't know how their goal has ended up in the back of the net. They've had a throw-in in the left -hand, bottom left-hand corner in their own half, miles, miles inside their own half, barely in line with their own 18-yard box. The guy's thrown it. Um, Kilman looked like he did, could have just headed it. I might be doing him a disservice from where I was, but he looked like he could have just headed it. He's missed it. It's gone through Dawson. It's gone through Totty. And the next thing, the ball's through on goal. Um, and there's a Sheffield United player with no one around him. I think it was, um, I think it was uh, Traore and... Um, Eight Norrie trying to catch him, I'm not quite certain, but they were nowhere near him really and wasn't wasn't their fault and it was a good finish and he stuck it in the back of the net. Um having gone five at the back, we then switched back to a four. Um Bellegarde came on for, for Sasha at, at one point and and Bellegarde, to be fair, is a is a hell of a goal. He's he caught it well and it's ended up in the back of the net. And that's really one of those examples where you think, yeah, take a chance, have a shot and and you never know you might score and, and he did. Um but the, the, after that, it's, it's so woeful. Why are we always hanging on at the end of games? We've, we've equalised in the 90, 91st minute. And some of their fans are even going home because they're thinking, we've seen this before. It's Sheffield United. We know what happens. And only Wolves can go and throw it away. And I haven't seen the penalty again. I, it, it, looked, it was right up the other end. I couldn't really see it, if I'm honest. I can't say if it's a penalty or not. Twitter seems to be, or exits now call, seems to be saying it's not. But I, I can't really comment on that. But we shouldn't put ourselves in these positions in the first place. Just get rid of the ball, get it down, play some football. And I really thought that we would be the ones pushing at the end of that game, having made it one all, and trying to find a winner. And I know people will say, oh, it's Wolves, we always lose against the rubbish teams, and obviously we miss Neto, which no doubt we did. But it's not good enough. It's really, really not good enough. You can't go to teams like Sheffield United, who were awful first half, absolutely awful. But do you know what? As bad as they were first half, we were worse second half. And that and that's the most disappointing thing. Gary O'Neill tries to change things, tries to change things. None of it worked. And ultimately, we, we've come away. You know, from a team that's got one point out of, I think, nine or ten games, we've given them three today. And it, it's really not good enough. <clears throat> well, it's a second half. It's not a penalty. We're used to it by now. We start every game 1-0 down. And we've not done enough in the game to uh, recover from 1-0 down. To be honest, we've been shocking. Um... We deserve to lose, if I'm being very honest. The Belgard equaliser uh, papered over the cracks, I think, of a of a woeful a woeful performance, especially um, especially in midfield. Um, the correct decision was to go with three in midfield. I think against Sheffield United, going three at the back. I know the systems worked really well for us against the bigger teams that we've played in the last few weeks, um, but for me, you have to. Uh, win the midfield battle before you can even think about starting to play players like Tommy Doyle who are going to try and un unpick a defence with a with a perfect pass. Um, how can we even get to unpick a defence if we can't even win the midfield battle and maintain possession of the ball and dominate the game? So you have to think about those things first by playing, um, I think you have to play Lamina, Buba, Buba Cartreore and Jao Gomez. I don't know why Buba's been dropped anyways because he's been fantastic recently. Um, I understand Gary O'Neill's thinking. And for me, it's not all on Gary O'Neill today because the players were woeful. They didn't really look arsed. They didn't really look um, like they were up for the fight at all in Sheffield in the cold, windy, wet, um, in the wet weather. Um, to be honest, it's another tale of Wolves giving the bottom team, the worst team in the league, their biggest result of the season and we've been doing it for years and they will never ever change doesn't matter if we have Gary O'Neill in charge doesn't matter if we have Pep Guardiola in charge we are charity FC and we will continue to give uh, wins to those teams below us in the relegation zone 
um, and then we will continue to, to nick points off, off the top teams, um, that we should never have a chance of getting anywhere near. So it's just the Wolves' way, unfortunately, and it's it doesn't look like that trend is going to change anytime soon. Um, we're now zero, 0 for 2 on wins against promoted teams, um, and I can't see it changing anytime soon, unfortunately. Um, just one of those days. Just one of those days. I'm not going to panic and say the wheels have come off. I'm not going to say Gary O'Neill out. I don't think it's his fault. I think we've been done by another shambolic penalty decision again. But what's the point in even moaning about penalty decisions and refereeing decisions? Um, uh, otherwise, every week I'd be on here saying the same things and it's boring. So we have to do better against those teams, obviously. I'm not going to say the wheels will come off. It's just a, a poor day at the office where no one could really be asked. it looked like. Um, and unfortunately, that's me done with Fabio Silva. I know it's never a penalty and he's pulled his leg away and he doesn't really deserve uh, the blame for it. But for me, his cameo was just atrocious anyways. He's come on for the last 10 minutes and done sweet FA. So um, for me, in that position, you'd be better on chucking on Nathan Fraser, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Fabio, I've given him time. I've given him praise and props all throughout all throughout. Uh, Last season, when he was in, uh, on loan, when he's come back in pre-season, you know, I was proper on the train, but just everything I've seen from him in this season, with all the chances that he's been given, we cannot be a charity for a player that just isn't cut out for the Premier League. He he might go abroad to a club like Sevilla or, or go to Germany and smash it, but he just is not built for Premier League football. And that's unfortunate, but it's a waste of money that we've made uh, and we've invested in him. And we need to cut our losses, get 10, 15 million pounds for him and just move him on. Or set him on loan and try and get uh, 15, 20 million pounds for him if he, if he does well. Um, but for me, that's my weekend. Unfortunately ruined. I'm going to try and go watch some fireworks. Finished uh, Sheffield United 2, Wolves 1. Uh, that's an embarrassing um, performance from us today. I think from minute 1 to minute 90, we really deserve to, to lose that game. Um, and we did. Um, in some in some horrible conditions, we just didn't look up for it. We don't really nobody really grabbed the grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck and wanted to play. Uh, I think the Tommy Doyle involvement wasn't probably quite right. He didn't seem to play the way that he has been playing going forward. It, it, many many of the passes were back side to side all game, uh, and realistically we needed to get up the pitch against a really 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 poor Sheffield United side who are bottom um, starting today I still think they are they had one point and now they've got four coming from us um, it's an embarrassing performance from from everybody really um, second half was even worse than the first uh, they come out and they they wanted it more they got forward their first goal was embarrassing to concede a couple of bounce passes past Kilman uh, and they're in on goal somehow I couldn't really see it properly uh, and then the penalty I've just seen a um, video of the penalty incident again um, what I will say about Fabio Silva is his, his cameo today was really really poor um, his first his first action was a, was a booking um, he couldn't pass he couldn't hold the ball up he had a free header I know, I know it was offside but you, you still should be doing better in those positions uh, and I, I don't think it's a penalty, but the lead up to to the penalty is really poor from him. He needs to one clear the ball to start off with. He has two chances to clear the ball, and he doesn't. And then you put yourself in that position, and, and ultimately they've got the got the penalty from that. Yeah, so really shit, uh, really bad. It's all right beating teams like Man City and playing well against Newcastle, but if you cannot beat Bournemouth, uh, sorry, if you cannot beat Sheffield United. Um, then we are still miles off it and, and that's the reality of it at the moment. Sheffield United 2, Wolves 1. Um, what can you say? Another controversial VAR decision. Um, but you know what? Did, is that really what we should be talking about? Or should we be talking about the fact that we couldn't beat bottom of the table Sheffield United after beating the likes of Man City? Um, it just doesn't really add up, does it? Um Yes, okay, we're out. We, we don't have Neto, but I'm sure we've got enough quality to be able to beat these teams. And today, we just didn't look at the races at all, especially in that second half. First half, cagey. Um, 
There were spells of some good football, but again, playing it far too much in the opposition box and not finishing their dinners. Um, second half, absolutely dreadful. Worst I've seen us this season. Couldn't string a pass together. Um, couldn't win a second ball. And it was all because Sheffield United came out of the gates in the second half, wanting it more than Wolves, fighting more than Wolves. And at the end of the day, that's not good enough from Wolves. We were too naive thinking that they were going to come out the same as they were in the first. And they weren't. They were really, really good. Um, so fair play to Sheffield United. Do think you deserved the three points today. Uh, subs weren't good enough again today. Um, I say again, this is probably the first time I feel like the subs didn't impact the game uh, other than Bellegarde scoring. Uh, but other than that, I don't think the uh, subs were were correct today. Uh, bringing on Fabio, ew, that wasn't really a good decision, in my opinion. You could argue that he's trying to, you know, fight for three points, which is which is great. But Fabio's not really that kind of player, is he? Um, he's more one of those players you want to bring on when you're convincingly winning uh, to get more goals. Um, yeah, like I said, we didn't deserve anything today. Um, and even if you look at the penalty, which we'll talk about just briefly, penalty, again, same place. It's like deja vu football, isn't it? Uh, Groundhog Day at the Blades because... Pff, Again, it's the same thing. We're trying to clear the ball. The The player gets in front. He dives. The, the ref's right in front again, but doesn't learn from any of the mistakes that the um, now, now championship level manager uh, made in the last game. Goes to VAR, and you're just thinking, it ain't going. It's, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be overturned. But there is part of me that was thinking, maybe they'll check the screens. Because they didn't in the last one. There was a lot of controversy over that. Controversy over that. Uh, but no, they don't check the screens again. Um, which is puzzling to me. I don't get why they're not checking the screens. Watching the United game today, they check the screens for an offside decision. But they're not going to check it for a last kick of the game that's going to decide who's getting the points. Don't get it. Doesn't make sense. Probably get another apology. Uh, but what's that really going to do? I honestly don't think we deserved anything from today. Even when we scored that goal at the end, that would have been a snatch and grab. Uh, not good enough today. Hopefully we're better for the next one. Until then, thanks for having me on, guys. And uh, see you later.